welcome to this live session where we have the special guest as a speaker professor satya kam pro vice chancellor ignu region at the ignu regional center cochin sir has been kind enough to be the resource person for today and sir will be talking about the most relevant topic national education policy 2020 the national education policy 2020 even though it is going to be 4 years old still there are many subjects where we can learn from and today's topic is relevance of nep 2020 in current scenario and uh, by dr uh, professor satyakam pvc ignu and we also want to highlight that the professional development program on the implementation of nep 2020 for university college teachers general public and also student highlighting the features of nep that is the e, e, utilizing e content e tutorial live conferencing discussion forum assessment involving 34% uh, of formative test and also certification is available in the swayam portal by indira gandhi national open university over to professor satyakam pro, pro, pro vice chancellor ignu new delhi ji namaskar dhanyawad uh, uh, dr dorupi uh, regional director rc cochin i am uh, delighted uh, i am very happy and i am privileged that i am in uh, cochin regional center and from uh, studio uh, of cochin regional center ignu regional center i am uh, addressing you uh, about uh, nep 2020 uh, what is nep uh, i always uh, giving my thoughts to the point that uh, nep is also new and it is also uh, national uh, means it is national education policy and this is new education policy uh, and uh, we should think that uh, what is uh, national in this and what is new in this so first uh, i will go with new and uh, simultaneously uh, i will uh, talk about the national aspects also what is new what is new in this uh, uh, new education policy because everything we start is new and uh, in earlier also uh, the education policies came exist and uh, earlier also the new has been uh, talked about but what is what is what is uh, peculiar about uh, this education policy it is it is uh, very different from the earlier education policy uh, first thing that uh, uh this education policy emphasizes uh, on the fact that we are indians and not only indians we are bhartiya and uh, being bhartiya uh, we have to know our sanskriti our culture uh, our civilization our sabhyata and uh, we should know each other uh, malayalam uh, should know hindi uh, punjabi should know urdu uh, tamil should uh, know uh, hindi uh, and uh, uh, like this every language and every people and every uh, from every nook and corner uh, all indians should know each other so how we will know each other uh, because uh, when uh, child uh, goes to his school and uh, the teacher is starts teaching her or him a b c d e f g h and uh, lot of time is wasted in learning the language which the child does not know a child knows 
learns the language from her mother. That is called mother tongue. And if she or he learns the knowledge in his, her mother tongue, then he has not to learn ABCD. He, she has to learn only how to write. If we say A oh, in Hindi, then we have the child has to write only A. Oh. He has not to learn A in listening and A in writing. And after that, a shabd, a word from A, A is called arm, mango. But he has to learn only arm. And, and a, a picture emerges, this is a fruit. But in mango, first he has to learn M-A-N-G-O, then mango, then that, this is arm. And in, henceforth, in other languages also. So, the national education policy, the first and foremost line of this new education policy, national education policy, that all the languages of India should come together and all the children learns, take education in their mother tongue. If, if this happens, then we will win a great battle against the colonial mindset that we are having today. We think that if our child will learn in English, he will go to England, he will go to America, he will, great, he will get great posts, lucrative posts. And if he will learn in his mother tongue, he will not get lucrative jobs. He will get uh, lower paid jobs. This mindset is not uh, built in one day. But this is 200 old mindset. When English is taught to the Indians, to serve the English people. And again, after 1947, this English has been, has become the tool of the ruling elite who can rule our own natives. And when the people see, oh, he's reading, he's learning English, so he's on the top post. So my son also, my daughter also will learn English. Why our mother tongue? Why our native language? So this is the main problem of India. And the national education policy, since its nature is national, is first thought that we should bring the languages together by teaching our child in mother tongue, in Indian languages, to start with the 22 scheduled languages of the 8th schedule. If we can achieve that, if we can do that, we can do wonders. 
you know, I am speaking in English. What is going in your mind? I am thinking in Hindi. It is being translated in my mind. And with my limited word power, I am speaking to you. Because my originality is in Hindi, in Malayalam, in Punjabi, in Tamil, in Telugu, in Kannad. Not in English. Every Indian who speaks English translates his mother tongue. But he is not original. He can't be creative. You know, the people who speaks their language, who work in their language, who think in their language, becomes great scientist. Great, great Sahityakar, great thinker, you see, Sanskrit was a language in ancient times in which all Indian philosophy is written. Maybe a script is different, but the language is the same, Sanskrit. So in this national education policy, we are not talking about the one language formula. It is talking about three language formula. At least learn two Indian languages. The Hindi people should learn Tamil. Tamil should learn Kannada. So, so we have to make a strong platform of linguistic plurality as well as linguistic bonding. This is the first and foremost objective of national education policy. So, from the language and ling linguistic perspective, it is new and it is national. Then, the next important pillar of the national education policy is emphasis upon Indian culture. Our child, our children, young generation do not know about their culture. They do not know about their festivals. They do not know about their history. We have to teach them true history, our true history. The stories of Mahabharata and Ramayana, you have to teach them. It is strange that our young generation is learning about Ramayana and Mahabharata and Kadambari in English language. And the interpretation about these languages in these languages are not representative. They are not presenting the right perspective of Indian culture. So, 
we have to learn in our languages. You know, we have learned many stories from our grandparents, Dadi ji or Nani ji. Many stories. And that is our first learning. They are, our, they are our first teachers. But the family, now there is no joint family. So there is no Dadi Nani living together. Mummy has no time, father has no time. Who will tell the stories? Who will tell the real history of India? Who will teach them the Gita and Mahabharata? So, this is the second pillar of the national education policy. There are, there are many aspects. Translation is the is an important tool of the national education policy. Teaching the teachers, giving teachers how to teach in Indian languages, native languages, mother tongue. We are all busy in preparing textbooks in mother tongue in IGNU. We are giving counseling in Indian languages. So the IGNU is implementing the national education policy in true spirit. We are pan India, we are pan world, so we are pioneer in launching the national education policy. So come together, work in your language so that you can think and you can experiment and you can give new ideas to the world as our founder fathers were giving philosophies to the whole world. Today I am speaking in English. I wish I would have spoken in my mother tongue, Hindi, and you all would have listening in your own mother tongue, at least to start with your own Indian language, native language that is in at schedule of the constitution of India. I speak in English or I speak in Hindi and you listen in Malayalam. You speak in Malayalam and I will I will I will listen in Kannada. The technology, the artificial intelligence, the work is going on And many steps has been taken in this regard. And time is not far when which we will achieve this target and the main aim of the national and new education policy of India, 2020 bind together each and every Indian with its language and culture, then India 
will be one in the mindset and with its own plurality, with its own diversity, with its own uniqueness, and then we will again with the Vishwa Guru, India will be the front runner in this. Thank you very much uh, for giving the opportunity uh, to give my mind uh, on the NEP 2020. Thank you very much. Friends, you are listening to the topic Relevance of NEP 2020 in Current Scenario by Professor Satyakam, Pro Vice Chancellor IGNU. At IGNU Regional Centre Cochin, we always talk about the Swayam portal before ending our live session. So, Swayam means the study webs of active learning for young aspiring mind. You can take a sample of the IGNU courses, the IGNU programs or comprise the courses. So, IGNU courses in the Swayam portal are available. You can take a sample of the courses which are of IGNU available in the Swayam portal. Get accustomed to those courses and you can either opt for certification through the Swayam portal or you can come back to the summer portal to get admission as a ODL learner or online learner. As uh, the life skill education, we also share small thought to, as a take home message for this session. Always it is talked about a uh, uh, owner having a donkey and as it grows old, the owner is throwing the donkey into a pit and he was trying to put the mud over it. But the donkey was very optimistic. Every time the owner was throwing the mud, he, the donkey thought to itself, telling, oh, the owner has become very old. By mistake, he has put me into the pit. Now see how good heart he is. He is trying to put mud and make me to rise. I should really contribute myself. So every time mud is thrown into the pit, it jumped and uh, jumped and jumped. At one point, it reached eye to eye to the uh, owner and thanked uh, the owner for the um, act, act of putting the mud. Friends, now the optimism is, do you really appreciate that the hurdles you ha have crossed helped you to reach the next level in your life? Second, do you have the patience to keep quiet when you have to keep quiet, like the donkey? When it was throwing mud, if it has opened its mouth, definitely something else uh, would have happened. But when it reached eye to eye, it was appreciating. So the take home message is hurdles are for you to cross and always be optimistic. Please take one day at a time and one activity at a time. That doesn't mean taking yesterday's activity for today's. Thank you very much for listening to this session and be a part of it. The recorded video of this live session will be available under NEP playlist in IGNU Regional Center Cochin YouTube channel. Thank you once again.